I guess if I turn on the microphone, it will sound better. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Delavine United Methodist Church. I'm your pastor, Angel Rosario, and today is Easter. We're celebrating when Jesus rose from the dead, and now he's seated at the right hand of God. Can we give a round of applause to Jesus? <laughs> he is certainly risen. So. Now let us bow our head and start our service with a prayer. Lord Jesus, we want to thank you, Father. Father, because you are great. And today, it's a beautiful day. Father, you have made this day for us and we will rejoice and we will be glad in it. Lord, this is a day that we celebrate that time in which you conquered death in which you rose from the dead, in which you were victorious, and you created, Lord, a connection between us and God the Father. The moment today is the moment in which our debt from sin, your word says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. And today was that day in which you rose from the dead and you said the debt was paid. That debt was paid in full. And today we have communion with our God, the Father. Because of that, Jesus, we want to worship you and thank you and celebrate your name today because of a wonderful act of love that you have made on the cross so Jesus, receive our praises and worship this morning. As we sing, Lord, the songs, we ask, we ask, Holy Spirit, that you move supernaturally around us and in us and through us. As we celebrate your name, Jesus, may we feel your, your love deeply. May, may we, Lord, be connected with you as we worship your name. Lord, speak to us through the message. Father, help us to understand your word even deeper. Help us to connect with your word and connect with you, Father God. That as we leave this service this morning, may we leave encouraged. May we le leave, Father God, with uh, feeling your, your love and, and our faith may grow this morning as we study your word, as we listen to you, Father. God, I, play, I pray that you use our musicians today, our singers today, in a supernatural way. That as we sing these praises to you and this worship to you, Father, may we feel your love in our hearts. May we feel you, Holy Spirit, in us. May you be glorified in everything that we do, Lord, because it's for you and for your glory. I pray this in Jesus' name, and thank you, God, for this wonderful day. Amen. Turn your eyes to the heavens. Turn your gaze to hope and life. For in hope and life, we find Jesus, the risen Christ, who shines in our midst with the light of heaven above. Please stand if you're able to call the worship. Christ is alive. Christ, Christ is, is risen. Inviting us to rise in fullness of life. Christ is calling. Proclaiming life and hope for all.
this morning is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 27, verses 45 through 56. At noon, darkness fell across the whole land until three o'clock. At about three o'clock, Jesus called out with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama zabachthani, which means, my God, my God. Why have you abandoned me? Some of the bystanders misunderstood and thought he was calling for the prophet Elijah. One of them ran and filled a sponge with a sour wine, holding it up to him on a reed stick so he could drink. But the rest said, wait, let's see whether Elijah comes to save him. Then Jesus shouted out again, and he released his spirit. At that moment, the curtain in the sanctuary of the temple was torn in two. From top to bottom, the earth shook, rocks split apart, and tombs opened. The bodies of many godly men and women who had died were raised from the dead. They left the cemetery after Jesus' resurrection, went into the holy city of Jerusalem, and appeared to many people. The Roman officer and the other soldiers at the crucifixion were terrified by the earthquake and all that had happened. They said, this man truly was the son of God. And many women who had come from Galilee with Jesus to care for him were watching from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of James and John, the sons of Zebedee. The word of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ.
Thank you, guys. Well, brothers and sister, um, again, one more time, I want to welcome you to our Easter service this morning. We're ready to uh, speak the word of God and the message of God. And this morning, uh, we continue talking about our sermon series for this month of April, uh, which is called More Than a Carpenter. More Than a Carpenter. That's, uh, it's based on, uh, part of this sermon series is based on uh, the book that Josh McDowell um, wrote called More Than a Carpenter. And uh, um, that's the series for this month. And today I want to speak about this question that uh, it, it has been asked for generations, for years, hundreds of years, even among Christians. This question is, who is Jesus? Who is Jesus? Truly, ask yourself to you, to your heart, who is Jesus for you? Who is he? And I want to just to uh, read one verse of the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 27, verse 54. In this, in this one verse, uh, we're going to speak in this sermon uh, from the perspective of these Roman officers. The Roman officer and the other soldiers at the crucifixion were terrified by the earthquake and all that had happened. They said, this man truly was the son of God. So we're going to speak about the perspective from this Roman officer. We're going to talk about that a little uh, later. But I wanted to start this sermon with this um, uh, story. One time, two brothers who lived in the uh, adjoining farms fell into conflict. The small misunderstanding grew into a major differences and a long period of silence. One morning, there was a knock on the elder's brother's door. He opened to find a man with a carpenter's toolbox. I am looking for a few days of work. Perhaps you have something for me to do, said the man. Yes, said the older brother. I do have a job for you. Look, across the creek at that farm, that's my youngest brother farm, and we do not get alone. He ended up creating a very wide creek in between our farms, and I am sure he did that to annoy me. So I want you to build me something tall, something big. There's a couple of wood in here. I'm going to give all this to you. Please build me something so, so big that we, we, we don't see each other's faces from across. The carpenter said, I, I think I understand what the situation is. So I, I will be able to do a job that you will be pleased the carpenter worked hard all day, measuring and sawing and nailing. At sunset, when the elder brother returned to see the finished job of the carpenter, his eyes opened wide and his jaw dropped. The carpenter had built a breach between the two farms, a fine piece of work with beautiful handrails. Then the older brother saw his younger brother across the creek that was coming to meet him with a big smile and arms open wide. You are really a kind and humble, my brother. After all I have done and said to you, you have still shown your love. And I am truly sorry for my behavior said the younger brother. They hug and they kiss and everything was fine. They turned to see their carpenter hoist his toolbox on his shoulder. No, wait, stay for a few days. I have a few more jobs for you to do. I have a lot of projects for you to do and we didn't even get your name, said the older brother. I would love to stay, said the carpenter, but I have many more bridges to build. By the way, my name is Emmanuel. This is Jesus. 
He is more than a carpenter. Jesus is more than the Lord. Jesus is more than a savior. And you're going to hear me repeating this many, many times this sermon, because this is what I want you to understand. When we call Jesus our Lord, many times we see Jesus far away because he's our Lord. We, can, we cannot approach to him because he's Lord. He's like a boss. Whatever he says, it goes. And when we see Jesus as our Lord only, then we see Jesus far away. When we see Jesus just as our Savior, then our interest to Jesus is just to be saved. We are afraid. We get close to him because we're afraid. If he's our Savior, that means that if I don't get close to him, I will be lost. So when we see Jesus as our Savior, we are approached to him in fear. If we see Jesus as a, just a carpenter, someone that help us to build our lives together, then we will approach to him for something that we can get from him. And throughout all, this whole sermon, I want, or, or this sermon series, I want you to understand, Jesus is more than a carpenter. He's more than Lord. He's more than Savior. Jesus is your friend. He called us friend. Jesus is our friend. And when we see Jesus as our friend, we will respect him as our Lord and Savior. When we see Jesus as our friend, we will be able to get close to him. And that is exactly what he wants us to do, to get close to him. Now, I ask, who is Jesus? And that's why this sermon title is this, Who is Jesus? Because for me, Jesus is more than Lord. For me, Jesus is more than a Savior. For me, Jesus is more than a carpenter. For me, Jesus is my friend. But how do you see Jesus? And ever, ever since Jesus' birth, people have asked this question, Who is Jesus? For some people, Jesus is just another good man. A man that had really good intentions. A man that uh, really did good things with poor people and, 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 and people that were hurting. And we should follow some of his example. For some people, Jesus is a good man. For others, he is a carpenter of their lives. And for many, he is a friend. Which it means that it, all this... That question, the answer of that question will depend on how is your relationship with him. How is your relationship with Jesus? So there is no perfect relationship. You know that, right? There's just relationship. So how is your relationship with Jesus? And depending on how is your relationship with Jesus, that, that is how you see Jesus for you. Who is Jesus for you? In the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 27, verse 54, is recorded an event that is very important to point out. And I just want to read it one more time. The Roman officer and the other soldiers. Now, the Roman officer, it was a, a, um, a soldier of the Roman uh, Empire, and he was an, a high, uh, kind of like a captain, kind of like a commander. It was somebody that whatever the officer said, the older soldiers must follow. If he enters the door, the soldier have to go straight up because he was somebody in authority over all the soldiers. So now this Roman officer, he was not there alone. He was with other soldiers. And this is what the word says. Uh, at the crucifixion, they were all terrified by the earthquake and all that had happened. And we just read that not only uh, uh, there was an earthquake, there was the, 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 the day turned dark when Jesus died on the cross. The veil on the temple broke in half. Not only that, imagine that on that moment, all the dead people returned to life. We all, we all know that when Jesus died, he resurrected on the third day. Like, that's why we celebrate today. But on that day when Jesus died, he was not the only one who resurrected. 
Matthew recorded an event that it is very important to see that many, all the people that have died before Jesus, they came out of the grave and they show up to their family members, to people. We just read it in Matthew. They all came out of the grave and they, they, they showed to the, uh, the bodies of many godly men and women who had died, were raised from the dead. They left the cemetery after Jesus' resurrection, went into the holy city of Jerusalem and appeared to many people. Imagine, these Roman officers are seeing all of these events. Everything that had happened. And the only thing that came out of their mouth is this. Truly, this man was the Son of God. Why is this so significant today? These officers did not have a close relationship with Jesus. First of all, these officers were doing just their job. This officer didn't have a, a really good relationship with Jesus. They heard about Jesus. They heard about this man and the things that this man were doing around because all the miracles and the things that Jesus did, uh, uh, they couldn't contain it. Everybody knew about Jesus. These Roman officers and these soldiers knew about Jesus and the thing that he, he did. So for these officers... Jesus was another criminal because they didn't have a relationship with him. You see, Jesus called himself the son of God, the Messiah, the one that was fulfilling all the, prophet, the prophecies. And Jesus called himself God. So for the Pharisees and the, 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 the experts in religious law, this was a blasphemy. And that's why they accused Jesus. So for these Roman officers, Jesus was nothing. Jesus was just another criminal. Another man. And, and, and that day of the crucifixion was just another regular day in their job. You see, crucifixion was not just from Jesus on. It was before. That's what we call today the death penalty is the, the worst punishment for a criminal act. And that's what happened to Jesus. So in that moment, this Roman officer and all the soldiers that were around Jesus doing their job, their regular day job for a crucifixion. But these officers were front row of all the events of the crucifixion. And even though these Roman officers and these people uh, were used to, to, to hang on criminals on the cross, these series of events were very unusual. They were the ones who whipped him almost to death. But they didn't hear a complaint from Jesus. You see, this was normal for a criminal to hit him 40 times. And this Roman officer and his soldiers were used to hit the criminal 40 times. And perhaps hearing the criminal complaining all the time. But with Jesus, they continue on and on and on until they were exhausted. And Jesus didn't complain like the other criminals would do. These officers and soldiers were the one who made Jesus carry the, the heavy cross. Just like they would do with the other criminals. But this time, Jesus didn't reject it. Jesus carried that cross. So that's kind of not very usual for these Roman officers to see. They were the ones that nailed him to the cross. Just like they will do with the other criminals. But with Jesus, they didn't have to struggle to nail him on the cross. Because Jesus made the choice to go on this cross because of love. And in that moment, these Roman officers are seeing not just the event that Matthews are talking about, the earthquake, the people raising from the dead, and, and the veil turn, breaking in half. No, he, they are, they're front row of the event of the crucifixion. This Jesus that they call a criminal is not behaving like a normal criminal. And they're seeing all these events happening on the cross. 
They normally will see a criminal try to fight their way out of the cross. But Jesus didn't do that. And to top it all off, I bet that, the, that a regular criminal will probably be cursing the officers, punching and kicking in. But Jesus didn't do that. In fact, after they nail him on the cross and Jesus was up on that cross, the very first words that came out of Jesus' mouth was, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they're doing. That's not a criminal behavior. That the person that they call a criminal could cry out to the Father in prayer saying, this people, they're hurting me. This people, they're uh, hitting me and, and causing me so much pain. This people, they are making me carry this cross. This officer, this people, they're doing this to me and hurting me so much. Father, please forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. You see, all these series of events made these officers to think, who is Jesus? Who is this man? Who is really this man? Because all of our, what we're seeing right now in all these events doesn't point out to a man that is a criminal. So that's why I ask, who is Jesus for you? Many at the time of Jesus were claiming to be the Messiah. Jesus was not the only person during that time that were claiming to be a Messiah. There was a lot of people that, that, that were prophets and they were doing some signs. And they were calling themselves the Messiah. This is why it was so difficult for many people to believe that Jesus was the Son of God. Now, the difference between those people that were claiming to be a Messiah and Jesus is that Jesus fulfilled every single prophecy from the Old Testament. He was the only one that fulfilled every single prophecy of the Messiah. So in that moment, many, in the time of Jesus, many were claiming to be the Messiah. So for these officers, Jesus was just another criminal. Until they experienced all this series of events on the cross. And it wasn't until these Roman officers and this soldier were really close to Jesus. You see, because something happened when we get close to Jesus. Our perspective change. Our mentality change. The way that we used to think about Jesus changes. Everything changes when we get close to him. So when it wasn't until these officers were really close to him that they were able to express this man, and I want you to understand, this man was truly the Son of God. So what the officers were saying is, we have seen so many criminals come in here saying, this is the Messiah, this is the Messiah. We have seen so many people proclaiming or claiming to be the Son of God. But none of them had said the words that these men have said. None of them have behaved the same way that Jesus is behaving. So when the officers that were front row saw all this event, they were able to say, now that we're close to this man called Jesus, now that we're so close to this man and we have experienced all these events, now I can say I am convinced that this man, that his name is Jesus Christ, this man truly was the son of God. The other, were, the other man were just claiming to be, but they weren't. This is the only man that have shown to be the son of God. That's why I say Jesus is more than a carpenter. Jesus is more than a carpenter. He is a bridge builder. The first bridge that Jesus built was between a sinful humanity and a holy God. The first bridge that Jesus had built 
was this, uh, between a sinful humanity, us, the human being, man and woman that have sinned against God, and a holy God. Because before Jesus, you could not get so close to God. And after Jesus, this breach was completed on the day like today. And a day like today that we celebrate Jesus' resurrection. It was a day when he resurrected and conquered death. A day like today is a day that that bridge was completed. And now every human being has the opportunity, the option, the chance, the way to get close to the Father. Because before Jesus, God as a holy God was in one side, us as a human being were on the other side, and sin was an abyss. A big hole between God and humanity because of sin. But the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross was that bridge that he built. So now we can say like the author of Hebrews, we can come close to God, confident in God, to find peace, to find sorrow, uh, to, to find peace and love with God. Something happens when we get close to Jesus. Closer. The closer you get to Jesus, the more you get to know who he truly is. Something happens when our lives get more intimate with Jesus. You see, that's why I say it's depending on the relationship you have with him. If you have a really, really good friend, you'll be calling your friend all the time. Hey, what are you doing today? Let's just hang out. You want to go fishing? Let's go fishing. Oh, you don't like fishing? Okay. Let's go see the brewer game. Oh, I'm sorry for any other fan. When you have a friend, you want to be with that friend. You want to invite that friend in everything that you, everywhere you go. So if you want your relationship with Jesus to be like a friend, that is what we must do. Invite him in everything to everything that we want to do because something happens for the good when we get close to Jesus. Life changes when Jesus is near. Our mind, our change, when Jesus, it's really close. We start thinking like Jesus. We start acting like Jesus. Our heart changes when we get close to Jesus. Our, our eyes open when we get to experience Jesus' love deeply. And we are able to see everyone around us through the eyes of Jesus. It is not called religion. It is not called religion because religion does not get you close to Jesus. In fact, religion gets you away from Jesus. The only thing that gets you close to Jesus is relationship. And your relationship with Jesus is different than your neighbor's relationship, my relationship. It is all depend on how much time you want to, and effort you want to put into that relationship. And one more news. There is no perfect relationship. There is not one way to do relationship with Jesus. It's the way that you want to be in relationship with him. So who is Jesus, really? Who is Jesus? Jesus wants to have a relationship with you. Jesus wants to be your friend. A relationship of friendship more than God and the creation Jesus said in John chapter 15, verse 15, the gospel of John chapter 15, verse 15, Jesus is talking to his disciple and, and the people that he's talking to. And he said, I no longer call you slaves. Other tradition calls servants, not slaves that have been, been abused because Jesus is not an abuser. So what Jesus is saying, I no longer call you my servants. My followers, my disciples, because a master doesn't confide in his slaves. Now you are my friends. Jesus called you his friend. Jesus is more than a car carpenter. 
He's more than a Lord and he's more than a Savior. He's more than the Sunday morning and Easter Sunday. He's more than that. He is our friend 24-7. Now I wanted to ask you, who is Jesus for you? After all this that you have heard me saying and talking, I want you to, ask, to, to answer this question to yourself. Who is Jesus for you? Is he a good man? Is he another prophet? Is he for you the carpenter of your life? Is he the son of God for you? Is he your Lord and Savior? Is he your friend? Who is Jesus for you? I'm going to leave that up to you and I'm going to finish this sermon. But if you want Jesus to be your friend, if he's not your friend yet, Jesus is more than happy to be your friend, your close friend, your best friend of your life. But it all depends on how you want him to be your friend in your relationship with him. So the question is, who is Jesus? Let us pray. Father God, we, we thank you, Holy Spirit, for the time that you have given us this morning. Thank you, Jesus, because you are our friend. You call us your friend, and you see us as your friends. And as your friends, Lord, you love us so much. Your word said that what great love is this, that one friend gives his life for many? And that is you, Jesus. You are our friend. Thank you, Lord. Because that wonderful day like today, over 2,000 years ago, you show the world that you truly are the Son of God, that you are God. You showed the world that you are who you say you were. And today, you call us your friend. I love you, Jesus. And I want to thank you for what you did on the cross. And I want to thank you for your relationship with me. I pray, Father God, that through this message, we all can get close to you, Lord. And have that relationship with you so close that we can see you as our best friend. So Jesus, we pray that you help us through this time, through this moment that from today on, Lord, our relationship with you may strengthen. Lord, that we can share the same feeling and the same experience with everyone around us. The people must know that you are the true son of God. People must know that you are a true friend. And that all you want for us is to bless us. Lord, I thank you for this message. And I, I pray, Father, that this message may stay recorded in our mind and in our hearts. In the moment of need, Lord, this message will be a reminder that we remember this message and you can give us the strength and the faith to face whatever we'll be facing. Lord, I pray for my brothers and sisters that need healing and strength today. I lift up to you, Lord, my sister Dory, my brother Stephen Jones, Pastor Eduardo de la Cruz, Nick, and Alice. I pray, Father, that may you be giving them the strength and healing that their body needs, their hearts needs. I pray, Father God, that they may receive the strength to wake up every single day, to move, to do what they need to do. I pray, Lord, for my brother John and his knee. Lord, thank you because you have used the doctor's wisdom 
to work in his need. And I pray, Father, for strength on that need. I pray, Father God, that every day may he feel better and better. And may he have a fast recovery. Father, I pray for my brothers and sisters in the military, especially my brother Nicholas. May you be with him and protect him. May you protect your sons and daughters. They're given their time to protect this nation. Lord, their relationship many times get hurt. And we pray for peace. We pray for their relationships, for their spouses, and for their children. We pray, Lord, that may you move supernaturally in their lives. May your love, Father, be poured down to them. May they receive that love. In Jesus' name, we pray this. Amen.
let's do this. Before the offertory prayer, let's do the Lord's Prayer that I skip. <laughs> and then we pray for the offertory prayer. How about that? Let's pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, and as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom.
children of God. Go and be Eastern people, people filled with hope and life and love for all the world. You may all go in peace. Amen.